you know, I looked him up after I heard this song. It's all, all I really know about him. So this is a song he made in 2010. So he would have been in his 50s, I guess his mid-50s, when he recorded this song. And it's a very eerie song called <laughs> Bands. <laughs> Great title. Already, already is just like so fascinating. So this is Andy Preboy's Bands. Ten years ago I'd meet a woman like her And I'd swear I'd fall in love So I'd go and throw away the decent Pretty but not beautiful Dedicated woman at home Just to roll in the mud Of common cigarette butts Burgundy menstrual blood Soaking in a third hand bed On a dirty bed spread She'd talk about the bands And the band she had The band she planned The band she led The band she dug The band she knew The band she loved And the band she booed this band, that band, every damn band, every damn band known to be the god old man. Nine years <laughs> on, we've been living as one in a house so dirty I cry. And did Incredible it opening. <laughs> gesture right with anti-corporate metaphor, though it smelled like somebody died. Inside a bohemian den, where we rocked all night with bohemian friends. Pythian women, Rebelazian men. Talked about the bands and the bands they're in. The bands they'd be and the bands they've been. Bands they dug and the bands they knew And the bands they ate and the bands they booed This band, that band, every damn band, every damn band Known to be the god old man This, this is when I really got band, in Every damn band, every damn band Known this to chorus. be the god old man This band, that band, every damn band Every damn band Known to be the god old man All we ever talked about These the like only thing we romantic knew. chords I know, it's beautiful Read a row to read about I heard the interview Without, what they gonna do without? I heard they had a falling out. What that falling out was all about? Like the oboe enters. <laughs> it's like around this. I'm like, what is this song? I mean, it really sounds like Lana Del Rey to me. Yeah, and this is before Lana Del Rey was doing anything. No, so long. I know. Maybe right when she came out. Eight years ago, I've had enough of that stuff, and my love for the girl was dead. Beside, I went and fell. Decent, pretty, but not beautiful Hard-working, well-dressed woman with a home instead Where we huffed and puffed and gushed on an antique Chippendale bed And she stroked my head on a satin bed spread I told her about the bands and the bands I led The bands I joined and the bands I fled The bands I dug and the bands I knew Grand old bands and bands brand new This band, that band, every damn band, every damn band Underneath the god old man This band, that band, every damn band This band, that band, every damn band, every damn band underneath the god old man. It's all we ever talked about. The only thing we knew. We read a row to read about. I heard the interview. They do the tour without. How they gonna do without? I heard they had a falling out. What that falling out was all about. So dramatic and mysterious. The end. Haunting. I mean, I can't think of many other songs that convey like the entire passage of time of someone's life so succinctly. Yeah. You know, really, he goes through three long term relationships. And yeah, he's just like a lifer in the music scene. <laughs> he's just seen it all. No, truly. He's and a guy in his mid fifties and he's like, it's slightly exhausted, but it's sweet and it's it's really an extraordinary song. Yeah, yeah, that's how I'd put it. It really is extraordinary. And I think not a lot of people know this song. There's a cool little video that's that set to all these different images of bands on YouTube. And I think it has like 300 views or something. Oh wow. Not a well-known piece of music. It, yeah, it kind of reminds me of um it's got that same haunted epic quality as like, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra. When I was 17, mm -hmm. it was a very good year. Except there is something comical, but also very real, which I'm sure a certain type of TC head relates to, is this like compulsion to talk about bands. And this fact that he's like, it seems like through the song, he's talking about three different relationships. He's yeah. talking about this like pretty but not beautiful girl he got with and... 
And then like nine years later, he's with a new girl and they're living in this messy house with this kind of like pseudo anarchist vibe and they have cool friends. And then later on, he's got yet another woman. He meets her and she takes into his house, but it always ends up in the same place. Just talking about bands, this band, that band, bands that he was in, bands that he fled, other people's bands, and just like this weird, and then the music's so dramatic that it, it seems like this like dark obsession. This, can't this stop band, that bands. band, everybody, <laughs> every damn band. You can't find the lyrics, but I think he's saying, this band, that band, every damn band, every damn band, underneath a god or a man. Basically, every, every band in the in the whole in the known universe just can't stop talking about them. Yeah, to me, like I said, it's almost like this. It's very like novelistic. It's like a it's like Nosgar or like Proust or something. Yeah, yeah, totally. It, like, like you can just picture like ten thousand cigarette-addled red wine chugging nights of sitting around a kitchen table or on someone's porch. Yeah, arguing about bands. I mean. We can all relate to it on this show. Yeah, a of course. Bit. I mean, but there's yeah, also I, there's and there's something about the passage of time too, where it's like you picture when he's young and he's like getting passionate about culture for the first time. He's probably got like mm-hmm. you know a young romance and everybody's like young and good looking and just being like and just being like, what kind of bands are you into? Oh man, I love them. Like, oh, you want to be my girlfriend? Oh my god, first love. It's kind of exciting. Probably going mm-hmm. out to concerts and then a little bit older where he's he's in the band. He's talking about how they would host these parties and they'd have friends come over. And, you know, now I'm picturing maybe he's like late 20s, maybe he's even in his 30s, got a cool bohemian crew, living a bohemian lifestyle, and he's got a band and he's like... Well, the- first he ditched the girl that was a little more square, it sounds like. Yes. A little more like that he ditched her for like the real like rock and roll like party chick. And then he's living the band lifestyle. He goes deep into that world. Like, just a messy, like, punk house. I'm picturing him just also, well, not necessarily Andy Preboy, but the guy in the song. I'm also just picturing kind of, like, local scene stir in, like, a small city somewhere. Just, like, the type of dude just be like, oh, man, I remember back in 88, man, the local scene was hype. You know, we had, you know, the squirrels were sick. Um, uh, Human Nature, they were great. Uh, actually, the guy from Human Nature, then he started another band, um, called like Charge Machine, and, and actually they were probably the best band of the era. And I, you know, I dude Sylvia's sometimes. Ghost. Do you remember <laughs> Sylvia's Ghost? Oh no, actually I, I shared a bill with them more than once, and uh, you know those guys they they would sometimes steal the show. But actually the the bassist they had to kick the guy out because you know he he was messed up on drugs at the time. You could just see it. See <laughs> talking about bands, who's yeah. but actually you know they found a new guy. He was in a band. He had been in Rollerball, actually. <laughs> he had been in Rollerball. And when he when he joined, they actually had a record deal. They made it out to LA once. They and they and they opened for a uh, Wall of Voodoo. <laughs> then, you know, they lived out there for a few months and then, and then they came back. And it is so specific about like the he talks about the bands on tour and you know, like somebody leaves the band and what's gonna happen. But anyway, I agree. Like second verse. He's in it. Got the bohemian lifestyle with the girl. And then it's in the third verse that actually, throw, can we throw the song on one Wait, more time? The, the part that kills me in the third verse is that he meets the new girl who has a house and a Chippendale so bed. Yeah. So she's, is that she, implied she's like, rich? Gainfully employed or just <laughs> responsible. She's, ha- she has health insurance, whatever this, you know. And it's like, he's like, oh, okay. Like you have a house that's like tidy with like a nice bed. I'm going to just kind of like, be the like 36 year old guy that like moves in and he, and he just starts talking to her, like you into music you know i guess we yeah we bonded a lot about the restaurant scene but are you into music oh yeah yeah i like music i'm always i'm always putting on the radio um what are your favorite bands oh my favorite band i mean i like ed sheeran i like uh wait have you ever heard of a uh, mother flipper <laughs> just like <laughs> starting to alienate her she's like i don't know about all this band talk he's like <laughs> Wait, I want to listen to the whole song. It's again. okay, babe. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Isn't this giving you sort of jam flow, man? Oh yeah. Good call. So I go and throw away the decent, pretty but not beautiful. Oh right, he ditched the square girl. To roll in the mud of common cigarette butts, burgundy menstrual blood, soaking in a third hand bed on a dirty bed spread. She talk about the bands and the band she had, the band she planned, the band she led, the band she dug, the band she knew. 
This conversation is happening on a dirty bedspread. That first girlfriend is so psyched he's gone. He's still with the, the rock and roll girl. Yeah. Their house is disgusting. They're getting a little bit too old for this live in a dirty apartment. Talked about the bands and the bands they're in. The bands they'd be and the bands they'd been. Bands they don't This is when they have like they do, all their local they friends in or the in the bands. Do. This band, that band, every damn band, every damn band, known to be the god old man. This band, that band, every damn band, every damn band, known to be the god old man. These chord this changes. Band, band, every damn band, every damn band, it's like Beethoven. The god old man. Mm-hmm. All we ever talked about. The only, only thing we knew. Read or wrote or read about. Or heard the interview. Heard the interview. I mean, that's just so us. Just like talking about a band, just being like, you know, I actually found a pretty interesting uh, interview from 1987. Uh, <laughs> like seasons are passing, the leaves are falling, yes, right. snowstorm. It's spring, it's summer. We do that nine times. Yeah, yeah the years just flying by. Uh huh. Eight years ago, I've had enough of that stuff And my love for the girl was dead Beside, I went and fell for a decent, pretty But not beautiful, hard-working, well-dressed woman With a home instead Where we huffed and <laughs> yep. puffed and gushed On an antique Chippendale bed And she stroked my head on a satin bed spread I told her about the bands and the bands I led The bands I joined and the bands I played He told her the bands Yeah, he told her and the bands I knew Grand old bands and bands brand new this band, that band, every damn band, every damn band, known to be the god old man. This band, that band. He thought he was done with that stuff, but something, he just starts talking about bands again. And she's like, babe, you're scaring me. <laughs> and he's just like, That's all he knows. It's all we ever talked about. The only thing we knew. We read or wrote or read about. I heard the interview. They do the tour without. How are they gonna do without? I heard they had a falling out What but that falling out was all about A beautiful song, just truly a haunted man I love that it ends with that line Read or wrote or read about I heard they had a falling out What that falling out was all about Like, you're just picturing He's kind of growing up, he gets a job He leaves that kind of weird, dirty house House party scene, too old for it. Like you said, gainfully employed woman. They're not really talking about music. And then he just kind of like goes into a trance. Like he sees something on TV and she's like, babe, what are, what are you thinking about? And he's just like, I just feel like we never got the full story about what went down between David Gilmore and Roger Waters. And she's <laughs> like, wait, wait, what? And he's just like, I think about it all the time. She's like, I think there was just a lot of unresolved class <laughs> tension between Alex <laughs> Chilton and Chris Bell. <laughs> I think about it all the time. What 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 if Big Star made like seven or eight albums? I feel like by the nineties with Teenage Fan Club, you know, citing them as a as a major influence, they could have actually been pretty big. I think they could have been been selling out, you know, selling out some pretty sizable venues. She's like, I don't I don't know who Alex Chilton is, babe. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's telling her. They're lying on her <laughs> antique bed. She's stroking his hair. And he's just droning on <laughs> about the bands he was in. Because it really does go from the beginning of the song. They're talking about kind of the future. The bands are going to, like, she's talking about yeah, the yeah. band she's in, the band she's going to start. And by the end, it's him reflecting to his basically third wife. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a nice little uh, moment is, and you know, the age that they've grown is at the beginning. He's like rolling around in the mud with that, you know, w- woman he leaves for. And then yeah. at the end on the Chimneydale bed, they're huffing and puffing. It just like doesn't come as easy. There's old, yeah. they're older. Oh, right. It's great. Like oh, they're it's just so, having kind so of like good. labored old old people sex. <laughs> the old people sex. Totally. Oh, that's a good call. I thought. Yeah, I was confused by that. I thought like, are they like smoking? Like, are they like smoking? No, they're just oh. no. It's just labored. They're you know right. they're trying to make it happen. Oh, babe, my back hurts. Oh, is great writing. Yeah, really great. I kind of want to check out the rest of this 2010 record. Yeah, Andy Preboy. Maybe we, we got to go do some more research on some of his other stuff. But yeah, I agree that I, I think well, I think Lana Del Rey video go games ahead. came out in 2011. So this is 2010. Um, is that her first record? 
Well, yeah. she had her. I thought she was, was an oh eight. No, she had she had uh, these pop Lizzie Grant sort of popish records under Lizzie Grant. To me, the the iconic Lana Del Rey period, I think that it's pretty agreed upon. Is it starts with video games, twenty eleven. No, this yeah, is I mean, a great song. I was thinking this. Nick was saying on the thread that Lana should cover it, but I was thinking this would be good for like a maybe I'd do a I'll do a cover of it for like a Japanese bonus track for the next album. I would love it. This band, that band, every damn band, every damn band, underneath. could make it a tiny bit slower, and it would be a little more like Lana Del Rey. That's sort of yeah, I was thinging it breathier, slower. Eight years ago, whatever, Jack Anna and 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 I think there's a lot of people who would relate to this song, or at least be haunted by it. We got to get it out to more people. Listen to this. Yeah. Sorry, this is on his Wikipedia page. In the mid to late 90s, Preboy played shows at the L.A. club Largo with Rita de Albert, where they worked on an ongoing musical, White Trash Wins Lotto, a Gilbert and Sullivan-esque treatment of the rise and fall of an Axl Rose-like character. Oh. It was also performed at the Roxy Theater on the Sunset Strip for three sold-out weekend engagements, as well as two sold-out shows at New York's PS122, Preboy and the crew also performed a medley from White Trash on the Conan O'Brien show. Interesting. I wonder if we could find YouTube of that. Also, because this song sounds like it could almost be from a musical. Well, yeah, when they said the Gilbert and Sullivan-esque treatment. Or maybe he started writing in that mode. Yeah. With those kind of chords. Lights up. A lone 55-year-old man walks onto the stage, sweeping up, looks up at the audience, starts singing bands. Ten years ago, and then just <laughs> the beginning of like a dark epic musical about somebody's journey through the world of bands. Maybe this is so obvious, but just the fact that the song is called Bands, and it's not even about being obsessed with music, that would be almost be too relatable. This is about a very specific dude who was born between 1950 and 2000. Let's give it a 50-year run who just had this like way of being specifically into bands, not into music, not into singers, specifically bands. There's something so evocative about this, like, and, and kind of haunting about that obsession, just being obsessed with bands. <laughs> this band, that band. <laughs> Actually, Jake, remember when we did a cold plunge t- together? And yeah, when you were really cold in the cold plunge, you were like, you're like, dude, 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 talk to me, talk, talk to me, talk, talk to me. To me. <laughs> and you started referencing that um, best show sketch. Oh, right. Because I was in so much pain and there's a classic best show sketch where one of the John Worcester characters like falls down the stairs and he's like, he's like <laughs> both of his arms and legs are broken, but the phone has landed right next to his, his, <laughs> his mouth and he's dying, but he's like, just talk to me, dude. And then he just, he just start talking about like twin tone bands, like start talking about like 80s soul asylum albums <laughs> and just like really deep stuff, like like really obscure bands stuff. Yeah, I remember you're doing an impression of just like, I mean, just what, what I, what I just kind of can't get over, man, is like the sound of those early soul asylum albums. It's just so punk rock. And, uh. <laughs> and then with great tears, great dancers union, maybe they kind of, Finally reached what they wanted to be. Maybe they just wanted to be three dog night the whole time. I don't know. <laughs> ah! That's totally like the comic version of this. Just like yeah, just yeah. The last moments of life, just like thinking about soul asylum's trajectory. <laughs> this your, fun, life, <laughs> your dying moments. 